Okay, everyone, so we're going to be looking at acids and bases. So acids and bases, yes, I know you learned this in grade 10. Um, and we're looking at essentially the same acids and bases that we looked at when we were first doing naming of equations, right? So acids typically have a hydrogen and they have to be aqueous and bases have to typically have an OH group. So this is going a little bit more in detail in terms of the theory behind acids and bases. So Arrhenius um, was a scientist that actually did a lot of work in solutions. So um, he's the person who actually is first, lo first looked at ions and how ions behave in, um, in water or any solvent. They, he also looked at the fact that we know that ions are able to conduct electricity when in solution. So he did a lot of work with ions. <laughs> uh, it's funny to kind of know that your whole life is dedicated to kind of one concept. But I mean, a lot of the things that are still hold, held true today that we are that we learned um, is from his work. So um, the whole idea that we already know that ions are able to separate when they are in liquid or solution. Remember that that term is called dissociation. So we looked at that in uh, at the beginning of this unit. So acids and bases are very similar um, to ionic compounds in this way, in that acids and bases will also create ions when in solution. So acids will create ions and so will bases. Now they have different terminology. Okay, bases are typically known as dissociating, so very similar to ionic compounds. But acids have a new term that we're going to be using called ionization. Okay, and that will come up in the lesson. But essentially, it's the same thing. So we have um, ionization for acids, dissociation with bases, but it's exactly the same thing that's going down. You have a compound or a molecule that is becoming ions when in solution. So... Um, as mentioned here, so a lot of the properties are going to overlap with one another, but obviously there are properties that are unique, depending if something is an acid or a base. So I just found this cute little image here that um, just kind of highlights some of the differences. So bases um, and acids typically have a taste to them, okay? Um, not all acids and bases are safe to taste, obviously, and I'm assuming this shouldn't even have to be said, but I'll say it anyway. So do not, you know, try to taste different acids and bases other than ones that you can find, let's say, um, in a grocery aisle where it's food that you can ingest. So for example, acids, the ones that are safe to ingest, typically have a sour taste. So think of, for example, citrus fruits. All right, so there's an acid inside citrus fruits called citric acid, which is kind of where it gets its name. So things like grapefruits and lemons and limes and oranges, um, even um, vinegar is a type of acid. It's uh, ethanoic acid. So if you think of, you know, biting into a lemon or a grapefruit or, you know, vinegar, um, not a bite of vinegar, but you get the point, they all have a very sharp or sour taste. Whereas bases, now there's not a lot of bases that are safe to eat, okay? So um, coffee, it happens to be one of them, uh, like the coffee bean extract um, or soap. So maybe when you were younger and you said a cuss word and your mom or dad washed your mouth out with soap, that's kind of like a famous phrase that they say they'll do, right? We're going to wash your mouth out with soap. Um, soap is very bitter, uh, or if some of you know maybe in the shower some soap gets into your mouth or shampoo gets in your mouth and you can it's gross tasting right it's very bitter so bases tend to have a bitter taste now in terms of texture acids actually do not have a unique texture uh, it's similar to water however some bases not all but a lot of bases have a slippery feel to it okay um, acids have the ability of reacting with metals. So actually when that happens, it gives off hydrogen gas. So that's a unique property, a unique chemical property that acids possess and bases are not able to do that. So acids are able to conduct electricity in solution. And actually this is common for bases as well. Bases, once they're in solution, can also conduct electricity. So remember that the whole purpose of conduct, the reason why it can conduct electricity 
is because it has ions. So both acids and bases do produce ions. Okay, another um, unique property that bases possess is that they're able to dissolve fats and oils. So when you wash your hands with soap, you know, let's say you had an oil on your hand, right? So maybe some um, olive oil or some kind of oil is on your hand. Just plain water will not take off the oil because oil and water do not mix, right? Oil is nonpolar, water is polar. But when you add a base, so think of soap or shampoo, the oil is able to dissolve off of your hand, right? which is why we wash our hands with soap. So there are many more properties. We're going to talk about these over the next couple of slides. Okay, so as you recall, remember acids and bases will both make ions in solution. So an acid is any hydrogen containing compound that ionizes in water. Okay, so before we put our acid into water, Okay, typically it's not called an acid yet, right? So we only call something an acid once it has been dissolved. So looking at this example here, HCl gaseous, this is actually called hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride then becomes hydrochloric acid once it is dissolved. But what we haven't been showing up till now is that HCl, once it's AQ, and if you remember when we looked at writing out ionic equations, when you have an aqueous substance, it really is separated into their ions. So HCl AQ is really hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. So this process is called ionization. So it's any process by which you make a neutral atom or molecule into an ion. So acids all do this. All acids will ionize when they are in water. So when you're doing this, of course, um, the ionization is only written as ions when it is a Q. Okay? When it's not dissolved yet, it is not separated. It's only when it's aqueous. Okay. Bases do exactly the same thing. Okay, the only difference here is bases are ionic compounds that have a hydroxide. So remember, anything that has the OH group in it is considered to be a base. So the term that we use for ionic compounds is dissociation. And we've seen this again when we looked at the beginning of this unit. And even when we looked at writing out ionic equations, uh, in chapter 9. So here we have uh, barium hydroxide, and this is in its solid form, but when it dissolves in water, it is now aqueous. If you have an aqueous solution, that means that this is going to separate into its ions. And just like you would with any other dissociation equation, so if you go back to, um, you know, we did this in chapter 8, dissociation, you have to make sure you are representing the correct number. So barium hydroxide has one barium ion and two hydroxide ions. So the difference here is bases are considered to be, they're kind of classified the same as an ionic compound. It's dissociation. When you have an acid, typically we're using the term ionization because we have a covalent molecule that is separating into its ions. Whereas here, this is already an ionic compound breaking up into the ions. So here are some more properties like we were mentioning. I've already talked about a lot of these. So acids, so sour taste, electrolytes, we've already talked about that. So water soluble and polar molecules, of course. So when you have acids, they are able to dissolve in water. The reason why is because acids are polar. So, of course, they're able to dissolve in water. Like dissolves like. So, electrolytes. So, notice, electrolytes as solutions only. So, solid, liquid, I should also add in here gas. Basically, acids in any other form other than aqueous are not electrolytes. So, going back to this. 
So this HCl originally is not an electrolyte. It's only after it's with water that now it is an electrolyte. You need to have an ion in order for that to uh, conduct electricity. So when we're talking about this, this is an important point because it's not all the time. It's only when it's AQ. We've already mentioned this one. So acids are able to react with metals and release hydrogen gas. Okay, so this should, a point should be made here that only metals that are able to actually displace this. So let me pull up our data sheet and show you what I mean. Okay, so if you're doing a single displacement reaction of an acid with a metal, right? Hydrogen is the portion of the acid that it's gonna be displaced. So really only the metals that are above hydrogen are the ones that are able to react with it. So for example, copper, silver, and gold would not be able to displace hydrogen. So you would not have a chemical reaction. But any other metal that is higher than the hydrogen can do a single displacement reaction, which will then, of course, result in hydrogen gas, right? Because the hydrogen is displaced and it's then on its own. Uh, so then acids can also react with any metallic carbonate, okay? So carbonate is a polyatomic ion, of course. We mean oh, it has to be matched with a metal. So when an acid reacts with a metal, carbonate ionic compound, carbon dioxide gas can also be produced as a result of that. So these are just unique properties that happen to be with acids. Okay. Um, in grade 10, you may have talked about ways in which you can measure if something is an acid or a base. So one of the main measurements that will tell us that is the pH value. So our next lesson after this is actually going to be all about pH. Uh, but in general, there are certain ways in which we can figure out the pH of a substance. We can use an indicator, for example, litmus paper. Litmus paper is a type of indicator. So the color, indicator just means that it will either change color or let you know what you have. So um, if you have blue, typically that will indicate that you have a base. If you have red, that indicates that you have an acid. So there is blue litmus paper and there is red litmus paper. But what you wanna do is you wanna look for a change. So if you have blue litmus paper and it turns red, that's gonna tell us that we have an acid because acids usually make, lit well, they do, they make litmus paper turn red. So if you had red litmus paper, that's not really going to be great for us because red litmus paper in an acid is just going to stay red. So we want to see a change. It's like confirmation that we have uh, an acid pH. Okay, there's other things you can use to test the pH of something, right? There's also pH paper. pH paper is where you have things that will turn different colors. It's a paper that turns different colors depending on the pH of the solution. Uh, okay, so acids are also able to react with a base to form a neutral solution. So we've already seen this when we looked at double displacements, right? So an acid and a base can react together to form water, right? Because you have that swapping of the elements. All right, bases. So a few things we've already looked at for bases. So bases are bitter tasting, they're slippery. Um, so water soluble. So ionic compounds in general are water soluble. So since bases are ionic, majority of them can dissolve in water. Of course, you would still have to check the solubility table, but most of them are able to dissolve in water pretty easily. Okay, we'll discuss the rest of these in the next part.